My name is Sarah Langenberg. I was asked to be the capital campaign chair, which means I'm basically in charge of raising money to fund the project. Um, I was ecstatic at the opportunity because all of the four agencies in this project are so important to our community and the people in need. The Crisis Center, the Free Lunch Program, the Domestic Violence Intervention Program, and the National Alliance on Mental Illness all provide services that people in our community need and cannot always find access to. And the really unique aspect of this project is that it brings those four agencies close together and they can provide shared programming It's been about two years, um, the Johnson County Fair, I saw Rod Sullivan, um, who I, um, I, I asked him what was going on with the building next door, and he told me that they were about ready to do a sealed bid. So I think it was the next week or a couple weeks later that I, after I'd spoken to the board and we, we decided to explore the purchase of the building and we asked the Board of Supervisors to give us some time to do that. And they actually gave us until February to explore the purchase of the building. They were the first ones to talk about um, possibly giving the building to the group. Now, before that, um, I'm, a, I'm an agency director, obviously with Crisis Center being an uh, agency partner to the United Way of Johnson and Washington counties that I knew of certain agencies need for additional space. The way that I became most involved was through my connection with Becky Reedus uh, at the Crisis Center of Johnson County. We've had discussions over time about office space and shared space, but more importantly we had a lot of conversations about collaboration and how organizations can come together to support each other um, and be a resource to each other and to eliminate costs and, and maximize our efforts. I've been uh, hoping to find the free lunch program a location with no stairs and adjacent parking for years. And when I um, learned from the crisis center that they were considering buying the building immediately north of them and they were looking for other agencies that would like to use the building, I immediately said, there are no stairs there, there's parking nearby. <laughs> I'm in. When Becky Ritas announced to the United Way Agency Directors meeting that they were looking for somebody to come in and share space, um, I put NAMI on their list um, that, yeah, we could be interested in utilizing some different office space. We all four started really working on um, some interior designs, models of what it could be. Um, we started talking about um, what type of money that we'd have to raise. We started, the capital campaign actually didn't come from the very beginning. Um, some of us thought maybe we might be able to do this more modestly, but um, the building as it is uh, needed a lot of work. So it's gonna end up costing around 1.2, 1.3 million when it's all said and done, yeah, for the building, yeah. Right now in the Crisis Center, our biggest constraint is space. Uh, we utilize every, it seems like every space has two or three functions. Um, we have many staff who are doubled up in offices and uh, our multi-purpose room is our meeting space, it's our support group space, it's where we prepare mailings, it's, uh, you know, it turns into a workroom. And so uh, one of the biggest uh, proponents for moving to 1105 or for seeking space in 1105 was to have support group space that was private. Our multi-purpose room is right inside our front door and so during a, survivor, a suicide survivors group um, for instance we could have a walk-in client for the crisis intervention program and they walk right into that support group or we could have volunteers who need to use the restroom who need to walk through that group and so there's just no privacy in our current facility. So uh, the, we're very much looking forward to having a support group space next door that is dedicated 
for, um, for just that purpose and so that people who come to the Crisis Center seeking some time and fellowship to deal with you know, some difficult issues that they're working on can do that in a space where they don't A, feel like they're on display and B, they uh, know that they'll have some private and quiet time together. NAMI's focus is education, education for people living with a mental illness and education for their families and friends to help uh, gain an understanding of what mental illness is and how they can be the most supportive of their loved one who has a mental illness. And also um, training for people with, living with a mental illness to help them find the road to recovery and to relate to each other and to become um, successful members of a community. It will just be easier for us all the way around to hold our classes. Right now our classes are held in places that um, around town churches or office conference rooms, wherever we can find space. But with the 1105 project, all of our classes, meetings, board meetings, group meetings, support group meetings can all be held at that one place. We will probably at least double our space for NAMI, but more important, the, the functionality of the space will be much better than what we have now. Uh, the way that the offices are lined up, the way that we have um, open workspace, what we will be able to offer people to come in and just use our materials um, will be much user, more user friendly than what we've been able to offer here. It's going to help us in, in a couple of different ways. One, our organization is expanding. Um, right now, uh, we've been uh, adding counties to our service area. Uh, in the past, we've served four counties, Washington, Iowa, Cedar, and Johnson counties. And we're adding five additional counties this year, uh, including Keokuk, uh, Van Buren, Lee, Henry, and Des Moines counties. And so we need expanded space for our administration and outreach um, services and a, a, the capacity to have a space that victims can come to that is confidential for them, but also confidential for our shelter residents. All of our services at this point um, have been centered out of our shelter location, which is at a confidential location. It's an, uh, a location we don't advertise, uh, and um, it's a safe house and we house generally as many as 350 women and children a year in that location. And to protect their confidentiality, we try to bring as few people as possible to that location. And so we've been working with mobile offices for some time, but with our expansion and growth, it's really important to have a separate space and a safe space for outreach individuals in the community who are not needing safe shelter but still need advocacy resources to come to. And so 1105 is really providing us a great opportunity to expand that support and in addition expand our support for youth services. Uh, up until this time we've only had the resources to um, support youth that have stayed in our safe shelter and having outreach offices, having a space that we can expand into um, allows us to um, do prevention work with youth, to do um, specific economic justice and economic self-sufficiency groups with youth and really to look at how we are supporting um, youth and adults in general. Our volunteers, many of us, are older, so having to negotiate stairs is a really tricky operation, especially many of us are carrying heavy boxes of food and, and recycling and so forth. And um, parking, especially in the winter, having to park a long ways away and negotiate you know, icy and snowy sidewalks to get back to the building to volunteer is very difficult for many of our volunteers. But it's also very difficult for our uh, clients. Just this morning I talked to a younger fellow, but he has bad knee problems, and he said those stairs were really hard for me. And we have other clients too, for whom the stairs are a real problem. Um, so those are the two things that will be a huge benefit for us. In addition, uh, we have some little uh, narrow stairs to get up on the stage, which is where our pantry is. So in order for any of us to go up to the pantry and get food we need for the day, you know, it's quite a trip up some stairs, down some stairs, and back into the kitchen. We'll have a lot more pantry space, which will be a huge boon for us. And the big, a very big thing, is that we will have a walk-in cooler and freezer. So that we will, um, it'll make it so much easier for our volunteers and for 
us to accept larger donations of frozen things, for instance, which we can't really do now. At uh, 11.05, we've worked with the kitchen designer and the um, person who's in charge of the building committee. And there will be a window through which the diners put their dirty dishes, and then they'll just move along a um, counter to the dish sanitizer, and it will be very streamlined and much easier for all of us. All those things are going to be a huge asset for these hundreds of volunteers that make lunch happen here every day. Um, they are, there wouldn't be a free lunch truly if it weren't for those volunteers. So it's our responsibility, I think, as the free lunch staff and board to do what we can to make it possible for them to continue doing lunch because they love doing it, you know. And our clients um, love the hospitality and, of course, the good meal. And I'm sure many of our clients, uh, for them, it's not only their only meal of the day, but it's their only meal where they get fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, so they get a healthy and a balanced meal. Another important space in the 1105 project is a large meeting space where we can host our board meetings and small trainings and things like that. Um, it, in a typical building, that room would sit empty most of the day because it's, you know, we have board meetings once a month. We have smaller meetings, you know, once or twice a month, staff meetings and things of that nature. And with all four agencies utilizing that, uh, that space, then it's a much more functional space. In addition, the way that it's located in the building, we can also use it to support free lunch program uh, participants through offering medical care clinics or mental health screenings or things like that. So that every space in the building is going to be used all day, every day. And that I think is really one of the critical pieces of the 1105 project is that there's been a lot of thought and effort put into making every space um, useful to the community and you know not just a big empty boardroom with a nice table and chairs. All four agencies um, can utilize the dining room, the free lunch dining room for training. That's something none of us have had um, in our own facilities is enough room to train, train our volunteers. The kitchen which will, is being designed as a commercial grade kitchen will be available to local foods producers so they can come in and process their produce, their tomatoes, their jams and jellies um, for sale at the farmers market and other places where they're able to sell their, uh, the things they raise. So we hope, we look forward to making this a multi-use facility for our agents, agencies, our clients, and for others in the community and in the county. So we want to make it as well used as possible for the advantage of as many as possible. It is such a thoughtful um, collaboration. We worked very, very hard to come up with resources that diminish overhead expenses, that diminish um, the duplication of resources, um, that really look at how we work together to create a, a process that's much more accessible to individuals who need our resources and really cut down the barriers for them of having to try and get to three or four different places. Uh, I think that, that just, the, just those pieces alone make this so critical. And you know, clearly we are also um, aware of the fact that the, the um, free lunch program is really desperately in need of space. They're gonna be losing their space come December. And that's a program that's absolutely critical. Um, our, uh, the women and children and men that we work with at DVIP have used free lunch program for years to, to supplement um, the resources that, uh, that they're trying to create for themselves. And, and so for us, having NAMI right there, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, to be uh, an additional resource um, for support groups and activities, uh, just the collaboration is just really incredibly powerful. Our agencies, of course, will be able to share the operational costs of operating the building, the utilities and so forth. But for our clients, the benefits are even uh, bigger because they'll be close to other agencies that they utilize. One of our clients once told me that he didn't come to free lunch on Mondays because it was his crisis center day, so he couldn't do both. 
I think the thing that's most important about this uh, project is the fact that it's a collaboration of four such important organizations in the community. Um, for many victims of domestic violence, something people don't always know is that how batterers control their movement and how they isolate them is so powerful and overwhelming. And for many victims, they are not able to get out into the community except under very specific circumstances that their partner um, will allow within that abusive relationship. And the crisis center can tend to be one of those organizations that um, a batterer might say, oh yeah, you want to go get some resources, go ahead. And so it gives us kind of a, a space that's close by that a victim can get to that her partner may not know she's using. And because um, we have batterers who do everything from checking mileage to um, watching where their partners go. And so having that kind of proximity gives a little bit of flexibility to victims that are truly isolated that they may need desperately. The four agencies that are using this space are all interrelated in the things that we offer people. We're hoping that we can offer support groups to the people that use the free lunch program, those that are living with a mental illness, that we may be able to start support groups before and after lunch to, to have them have, find support and care in other ways besides meals. And um, the same with um, the, the um, domestic violence intervention program. We're hoping to partner with them more in uh, providing our classes for the people that use their, their uh, services. And of course, we work very closely with Crisis Center also with suicide prevention and other ways to help families and members or people with living with a mental illness. Working together, we can increase what we're offering, increase opportunities to provide education to the community, really raise awareness. Working together, we already do that a great deal, but uh, being in the same space and being able to just walk into the office next door and say, hey, let's work on this, creates all kinds of really wonderful opportunities. Volunteers will be able to volunteer for um, several different organizations, maybe not all in the same day, but they'll gain exposure to like what we're doing, how it connects with the Crisis Center, how it connects to DVIP and the free lunch. The collaboration is the only way that we're going to meet increasing demand. We all offer uh, unique skills. We, we're bringing unique thoughts to the table and those being able to collaborate around our clients um, from all these different perspectives means that we may discover new ways to meet needs that are um, more efficient, cost less, and do a better job of helping our clients really move forward in their lives. And we, um, it, it's the kind of innovation that Johnson County needs. We're excited to be a part of that and be on the forefront of doing that. And we're hoping that it'll serve as an example to other nonprofits. We, we're still actively engaged in our capital campaign and we um, are still looking at raising um, about $700,000 to $800,000 yet for the building to finish the interior. We've got some um, exterior work to do yet. The community, I think, should be very excited about this prospect. Uh, there hasn't been a collaboration, collaboration like this of agencies in this community uh, where, you know, we're, as they say, working not only harder but smarter, where we're sharing our facilities, sharing our operational costs, um, where we're collaborating so that we can be of greater benefit to our clients, uh, providing them more help more easily. And so if I were an investor in this project, which I am, um, I would be, um, I am very proud to support this innovative and uh, very uh, productive venture that will be, have benefits in so many, in so many ways for the agencies, for the clients, for the county and the community as a whole. I'm just very excited that we uh, have had this opportunity. We've been working on this for a couple of years now and um, are so looking forward to moving in and getting our, our, um, our um, cooperation going full, fully as we live together. And um, I'm just so hopeful that the community will continue to support this um, both in their word of mouth 
for uh, letting people know about our programs, but also financially, which is a very key. We, we really still need a great deal of financial support to make this happen. The Alumno 5 project um, offers the kind of innovation that we know nonprofits need to pursue to remain viable and sustainable for the future. We, um, we, uh, this is a very giving community. You know, we have one of the highest volunteerism rates in the entire United States. We, um, at the Crisis Center, experience people's generosity with um, food donations and with um, financial donations to really um, give us the opportunity to do the work that we do. But we also know that demand is increasing. And there, without these kinds of collaborations, without reducing some of our very basic costs, such as not having to rent space to do our trainings, but to be able to train all our volunteers in one space, or not having to have four copiers when we could have one copier. We, we can't even begin to imagine yet what the opportunities are gonna be like. Being together is gonna be really a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us.